So the March 2019 update to the Power BI desktop is out and with it comes a new modelling view. In today's episode of the Power BI show I'm going to take an in-depth look at that new modelling view and the new features that it brings. Before I update my version of the Power BI desktop to the March release, I thought I'd take a quick look at the model viewer that we've had up until now, and that way we can do a comparison between the old version and the new version, and then I think we can see just how many new features they've added into the new version. So if we start off with the old version, really all you got with this was a view of your tables and the relationships between them. We can see uh, whether they're bi-directional filtering or single direction filtering. Uh, we can double click on a relationship and edit that. We can set up the, uh, which fields the relationship is between. Uh, again, we can set the direction of the filtering, uh, the cardinality, and whether the relationship is active. Uh, we can right click on a table and hide that in the report view. And you can right click on individual fields and hide those in the report view. What we don't get is a list of the field names here. We get those in the report view, we get those in the data view. But in the old version of the model viewer, we don't get the uh, the field names there and we can't do anything with them. And beyond that, all really we can do is, is zoom into our data model, zoom out, uh, reset it. And that really is all you can do with it. It's, re it's really just there for you to set up the relationships between the tables, uh, essentially, uh, and, and very little else. OK, so I now have the March 2019 update to the Power BI desktop installed on my machine. And with it, I get the new modeling view. Now this new modeling view has been around in preview for a few months, uh, I think it was originally released with the November update last year, uh, but if you don't look at the preview features and you go into this for the first time you may be a little bit uh, uh, surprised or confused to see the new features. We know it's the new modeling view because the icon over here has a star on it and of course we have an additional couple of panes here over on the right hand side, we have the fields pane and the properties pane and then we have some tabs along the bottom here. OK, so the default view that we start off with is very much like the old modelling view and then we get an overview of all the tables within our data model. We can go in and we can right click on the table and we can hide it from a report view or delete it from the model altogether. We can right click on an individual field and again we can delete that from the data model or we can hide it from the report view. And we can go in and create, edit and delete relationships. Over here on the right hand side I now have a fields pane. Uh, much like we already had on the reports view and the data view and I have a properties pane. If I select a table that brings up the properties for that particular table so I can change the name of it. I can enter some synonyms for use with the Q&A feature and I can give it a description. I can also flag that table as hidden in the reports view and I can even change potential or potentially change the storage mode from import to direct query or dual. If I select on a field I get some more properties. Um, I can change the data type, the format, uh, the sort by column and that's very similar to what we already had in the reports view on uh, the modeling ribbon. One of the new features that we now have is the concept of folders within a table so what we can do now is we can select multiple fields in a table and we can store those into a folder under the table. So let me show you that in action now. Let's go to the sales table and I can multiply select uh, fields by holding down the control key and clicking on them. So I'm going to just select the amounts in here. So I've got discount amount, net sales amount, uh, returns amount, sales amount, and then perhaps if I put in there total cost, unit cost, and unit price. And then if I go over to the properties pane here, we've got uh, some, uh, one of the, the, the properties is display folder. I can put in there, uh, say, amounts. And then you see we've now created a folder under the sales table called amounts and all those fields are stored within that folder. Let's take that on further uh, and do that again. So this time I'm going to select the, count, the, the quantity field. So discount quantity, net sales quantity, uh, returns quantity and sales quantity. And I'm going to call that, give that name of quantities for the folder. press return and I've now got two folders in my table uh, amounts and quantities I can right click on that folder name and I can rename that or delete it from the model if I delete it from the model that just returns my fields back into the uh, under under the sales table I can also now change the uh, 
uh, properties of multiple fields at once. So again, if I select uh, a group of fields holding down the control key, uh, so if I check um, select amounts again, so discount amount, net sales amount, returns amount, sales amount, uh, unit cost, unit total cost, unit cost, unit price. And I go down, look down my properties. I can see it's currency, and it's currently set to English uh, dollars. I can just go in there, and click on that property, and get from the drop-down box. I can select English pounds, and that will then set all of those fields from dollars to pounds. In addition to the default modeling view diagram, which contains all tables within your data model, it's now possible to create additional diagrams which only contain a subset of tables. And that makes it uh, easier when you're working with more complex data models. To do that, we click on the plus down here. That brings us up with a blank diagram canvas. And then I can start by bringing in one of my tables. So if I bring in the sales table, for example, and I can bring in individual tables one by one. Or I can also uh, right click on the background and then tell it to add all related tables. And what that will do is add all the tables that have a direct relationship with my sales table here. And I can resize that down. As you can see, that's much easier to work with. If you had a much more uh, complex data model than the one I have here, that would make it much easier to work with. I can create additional diagrams by clicking on the plus again, and I could bring in another table, so product. And again, I could bring in all the related tables to that one. And you can see then I can have a whole series of diagrams that would make it much easier to work on a, a complex data model. And then if I want to, I can rename these diagrams by simply double clicking on the tabs down the bottom. So if I call this one sales, for example, and then double click on this one, and I can call that products. So as you can see, the new modeling view is a vast improvement over the old modeling view, it has much more functionality. And I think it's a really great place to now build and maintain your data models. I really like the fact that we now have the fields pane over here on the right hand side, along with the properties pane, and that you can group individual fields into folders within tables. And I love the fact that we now have multiple views in addition to the, the default view with all tables. I think if you have a data model that is very complex and has lots and lots of tables in it, this is going to be a real advantage. Okay, so let's quickly recap on some of the features that are included in the new modeling view. First up, we have the new fields and properties panes. And then it's now possible to quickly and easily select and update properties on multiple fields and tables at once. We can create display folders within tables which allow us to group together columns, measures and hierarchies. And in addition to the main view, which includes all tables within our data model, it's now possible to create additional diagrams, which only contain subsets of tables. And with that in mind, it's also possible to now bring in a single table to one of those diagrams, and with the click of a button, bring in all of the tables that are related to it. That's it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, then please let me know by giving it a big thumbs up. And why not leave me a comment in the comment section below, letting me know what you'd like to see on future episodes. If you're new to the channel or you haven't done so already, then please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click on the bell icon to be notified of when I upload new content to the channel. As always, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Power BI Show.